so before I jump into it, let me just say a little bit about the Planning Commission. Uh, it's a volunteer body, and its job is to look at questions that have to do with zoning and design and land use before they go to the City Council. The only power that the Planning Commission has is the power to make a recommendation. But it, it turns out to be a pretty important function in a small city because uh, there, it's the opportunity for the council to hear input from at least seven citizens who have taken a close look at something before it comes to their desk. And that's all we are. We're seven citizens. We're not, you know, I'm, my job is not urban planning. Nobody, nobody on the council is a specialist in urban planning. What we are a specialist in is living in Newcastle and listening to our neighbors and trying to reflect what we hear from you and ask the same kind of questions that we think you would ask when we have a matter that comes before us. What is the problem or the question that we're trying to answer? And the question we're trying to answer is what should uh, this area look like when the people who own this, the properties here decide they want to do something different with them. So the, the, all the city can do is set rules for uh, for property owners to follow. We can, put, we can, the city can put some boundaries around what is allowed as a land use and, and what can be done in a certain area. It's up to the landowner to decide what they want to do with their property. And why, so why do we want to do this now? What's, what's wrong with what we've got right now? Well, uh, what we have right now has been in place since about 2000 with some changes. And we've learned some things as a city in that time that have identified some uh, shortcomings in our current plan. Uh, one of the shortcomings is we've learned that, that what we thought we had in terms of uh, determining what the use, allowed uses are really has a lot more holes in it than we would like. I'll turn it up. So, what we'd like, and now I'm, what we, Joe Citizen of Newcastle, would like for this area downtown is that it continue to be a place where there are services that we can access. Shopping, restaurants, um, personal services. We, we want to preserve that because this is a great place to shop. It's a great place to have dinner or lunch. The way the current plan is written right now, if the owner of this parcel right here wanted to redevelop, tear down this building and build something new, they could put up an apartment building here and with no space for a restaurant. That's not really what I think the framers, if you would call them that, had in mind when they created our plan, but we've realized that the way it's written uh, would allow that. We've also uh, seen from experience of the kind of projects that have been proposed and uh, approved under that plan, and when I say approved, it, the, the City Council uh, can't veto a project just because it doesn't like it. If the project satisfies the requirements of the law, then that landowner has the, the right to do that. Well, there's a property next to City Hall that uh, is in an a, a area that was zoned office, and it's almost all residential. And when that building went up, a lot of people in Newcastle felt it was too high, and um, so that made us wonder about what the about the height limits, what the height limits should be for this area. What what does Newcastle want for height limits? So the city council asked the planning commission to take a look at this and to come up with new guidelines. In the meantime, they put a moratorium on any new projects so that we could ha have time to do this work. The, one of the key things that happened as a result of this process was uh, that there was a public input period where we, we had workshops, we had uh, an online poll, and hundreds of people from Newcastle stopped by or went online and said what they wanted for downtown Newcastle. And a few things really stood out about that input. One was that they really value this area for its commercial uses. And if anything, they'd like more. They'd like more shops, they'd like more restaurants in particular, but they really value that. Another thing that stood out was that they really 
weren't expressing a lot of concern about changing it. So one of the things that um, is often found when a community asks this question is that there's a sizable group of people who say, don't change anything. We like it just the way it is. And you know, there's a lot to like about what we have right now. This is a, this is a very a vibrant shopping area. The merchants are doing well. They provide good services. It's great, it's great. So we don't wanna mess with that. We don't wanna mess with the, the formula for success, but we wanna make sure that whatever comes next continues that formula for success. Okay, so uh, this, is the, this is the zoning that exists here now. It's a combination of different uses. This is mixed use industrial, so you could have some industrial stuff there. This is the, the community business area. Uh, this was the office area, and this is residential. What we are moving to is um, a much simpler scheme where there's all one, the, the use category, category is the same for everything that is colored there. The difference between the pink and the yellow is that these areas border or come closer to lower density residential areas, so the height limits that would apply to anything that would be built here eventually are lower than what would be there, because height was one of the things that we heard was a concern for Newcastle residents. So let me talk about the new scheme now. Um, one thing that's different is that there is a requirement that there be ground floor retail or business in, uh, in certain areas, and it's defined by what street the area is on. So if you look at the the light green line going down the middle, Cole Creek Parkway, everything that, every property that touches that street, if it were re to be redeveloped, would need to have 100% ground floor, uh, I'll call it retail, but it's not just retail, it'd be restaurants, retail, business services, things that are pedestrian oriented businesses. The, the, the uh, street, Newcastle Way, and, and, and as it curls around to 132nd, that would also have a requirement, thank you, that there be ground floor business, but, but the percentage is less. And we haven't really worked out the percentages yet for these things, that's the one piece of work that remains before we make a recommendation to City Council. But there is a, there is a requirement, so, you, and, and that is one of the differences between what exists now and what we want is that there has to be a place for a restaurant like this in these new buildings if they are, are built. The, um, those dotted lines are, are, are lines that uh, c could, or that this city would like to be traffic, vehicular traffic or pedestrian traffic flow, uh, passages if these parcels are ever redeveloped. So, so that was one of the things that the plan addressed. Another was um, the transition zones. If you're gonna be building next to, sing to single family homes or lower density housing, how do we make that so it is a win-win for the people on both sides of the property line? And one way is to require uh, landscape buffers, but another one is to uh, put limits on heights. And then the final one is to, make, is to use what we call a daylight plane. That's that dotted line there. That's, that's a requirement that the, the facades of buildings that are facing single family development uh, it's kind of step back so that sunlight is gonna be reaching those people more often during the day. It's, they can't have a, a massive wall facing them. It's gotta be reclined. So it's a much more, makes it much more human scale than you'd otherwise find. There are requirements not only for the transition zone, but for all buildings, design requirements. And um, again, part of it is, is um, height. So uh, our recommendation is going to have a maximum height of five stories in the downtown area with a maximum height of four stories close in those transition zones. And that is lower than the existing code allows. Right now you could go up to six stories, I think throughout the entire zone, so lower, lower height limits. Um, setbacks like you see there where the building is stepped back from the street and then again is to avoid the, a massive wall. And um, further requirements for pedestrian amenities and 
and uh, the design, the materials used and the facades of buildings so that you, you get a diversity of design, you get a var variegated, if that's the right word, you get variety in the facade. It's not just one flat space, it's got to have different planes. So, and, and a difference between the new code, the proposed code and the old one, if I understand it correctly, is some of the, the, those things were in the old one, but they were in there as incentives for someone to, to build higher. And in the new scheme of things, they would be requirements. Because we found from our experience, from observing the experience of other cities, is that the incentives really are weak and they don't result in the kind of downtowns that the city really wants. As part of our process, we looked really carefully at, at what happened in Kirkland and Mercer Island and Bothell and um, other communities to, to see what their codes say and also how well are they working for them. And, and, and a lot of that is reflected in what we're doing here. Uh, buildings would be taller along Cold Creeks. So there's a, this is an example of just an artist's conception of something that might be built there. Now, this is an example of one of the things that the, uh, the consultants visualized for us in response to the feedback we got from citizens about what kind of improvements would you make over here if the city were willing to spend the money. Um, and this intersection right here is actually this intersection right here. So one of the top things that people expressed a, a desire for was better access in and out of this for, for vehicles and also better access for pedestrians. The whole one theme unifying the entire downtown plan proposal is to make it a much more pedestrian friendly place, a safer place to walk, a place that's more pleasant to walk and bike. Uh, and this would be an example of, uh, that would address both the vehicle traffic and the pedestrian traffic. Here's an example on the, over in that area, across from the, uh, uh, not the food stand, but uh, just, I guess just east of that. Uh, this is just a pedestrian crossing, but there's, there's a lot of traffic, during, especially during rush hour times uh, during, of the day, and it's not a very safe place for crossing to occur, and there are kids that are crossing for school buses, there are people crossing to catch the metro buses. And so this would be an improvement. It's a, it's, uh, it's a raised pedestrian walkway that would just alert drivers that this is a pedestrian area that you're approaching. Slow down and make it safer for the people who are crossing. And then this is a this represents a third idea that uh, the consultants said would respond to what people were saying. It's uh, um, a green street. So basically, so this actually is an artist's conception of this street right next to us. And um, it, it's predicated on the city turning this into a public street. It's now a private street, as you, as you know. And adding enhancements to it that would make it uh, a nice place to walk. But also, uh, if you look in the background, there's a couple of red trucks. Those are, those are food trucks. and. Uh, there, and further back, not seen in this picture, is a, is a little plaza um, that if you take all these elements together, um, the city could block the street off for a couple of weekends a year for a, a festival, for example, if they wanted to have a, a street festival, something, you know, if we wanted to feature the merchants here and have booths, it, it, there's no space for that right now other than Lakebourne Park. This, is, this would be an opportunity to have a street have a dual use. So those are, they had about six or eight examples like this, and they are all uh, on the project web website, so you can go and look at those pictures. Those are things that, uh, if the community supported them, would probably require uh, extra funding, you know, probably a bond measure. Some of them could be maybe financed over time out of regular city revenues, but, but these are probably more things that are um, extra if, if the community wanted them.